everyone. Doug Grant here. Super excited for you to be with us. Um, we're going to be going over some phenomenal information here that hopefully is a game changer for the rest of your life. Uh, we're really excited about uh, this webinar and what it can do for you and do for your families and your homes. Um, this is one of those that is really a big conversation in our home ever since our kids were small. And we're really big on educating them on the truth about um, drugs and what they do for you and what they do against you. And when is the right time to use um, over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, and that those choices they make will affect their long-term health. And so I think it's a subject that isn't talked about enough. And so as you're coming on, um, our holding room is being opened up and people are starting to come on right now. If you wouldn't mind going on the chat and putting on there um, just your name and where you're from, that would be great. So we make sure the chat's working. We're going to be able to um, open it up here for questions and answers. And as we go through, if you have questions, it's being monitored on our end here. Becky's here and uh, doing that. But if you'll put your name in the chat and let me know um, where you're from, that would be really great. Um, awesome. Thanks for being here, Ruth. Um, Florida, welcome from Florida. Pilot Point, Texas. Thanks for being here. Pasadena, California. Uh, appreciate you coming on. We're super excited. And we'll get started here again in just a minute as you're coming on. Make sure you put your name and where you're from in the chat so we make sure that's working for you. And as, if you have questions, again, as we get going, put them in there. I might not be able to see them as I'm speaking, but Becky's right here to my left and she'll uh, let me know um, if it's important enough to answer at the time or if not, we'll answer at the end of the webinar. So Louisiana's in the house. Thanks for being here. So as we're waiting for the rest to come in, I was just mentioning to the doctors and for those of you that uh, don't know, every month we do a webinar. We do it on a subject, kind of a focus for the month. And um, when we do it, we do a webinar for doctors all around the world before this webinar. So we were just on a webinar with doctors um, from all over the nation. I think we had one from Trinidad on there too. And from them, do the doctors, we educate and talk to them and they, they let us know how the patients are doing and what's going on and their needs. And we talk about the holistic approach, anything new out, any new research out, how they can serve you better. And so if you're holistic, health professional invited you to this webinar, thank them. Um, it's their way to help keep you educated and listening to the right things. In a world that has a lot of chatter out there, we need to be listening to the right people, the right research um, to motivate us so that we can stay um, more focused on optimal health. And we just got back um, this morning from uh, Virginia Beach. And in Virginia Beach, um, I spoke to a large group of entrepreneurs and I was there to be able to speak with great people by the name of David Meltzer, um, Tony DeSilvestro, one of the most successful people on the East Coast as far as a business. Um, Magic Johnson uh, flew in from L.A. to Virginia Beach to speak. It was phenomenal seeing him and hearing his story and what he was, went through and the holistic approach he used to heal his body, but then heal his life and his habits that he needed to break. And it was really, really neat. But what I want to share with you about that experience, um, the last uh, three days I was in Virginia Beach, is that people want the truth. We spent a lot of time on why the tobacco companies bought up all of the food companies and they're using the same marketing tactics and they want you to be zombie-like. They want you to basically not think clearly so that you'll just keep using their products the same as the tobacco industry did before. They're using those same tactics. And we went through that. We went through the pharmaceutical companies, how their goal is to get you more addicted than it is to heal you. And it's they're in business. And uh, they, if you get all better, then they're not in business anymore. So it's a kind of a cutthroat world on that side of things. And it was amazing to see the reception the reception of the public of like, man, we're tired of all this. That makes sense. That resonates with me. We didn't know that's what's happened. We didn't know the tobacco companies bought up the craft and general foods and all them. And yeah, we see the same tactics, right? It went from the Marlboro man to the Kool-Aid man. And, you know, it's the same thing, but moved over. And it was really, really inspiring to me to be able to see that. And I just want to share that with you, that um, you all are there on this call, aren't the only ones 
that are waking up to the importance of being natural and being holistic. So thank you for being here. Um, this webinar is about spring cleaning your medicine cabinet and spring cleaning your medicine cabinet as far as understanding that there are things in your medicine cabinet, some of them you actually should get rid of. And there are some things that you shouldn't go to first thing that you should try the natural approach, the holistic approach first. And so we're going to jump right into it and understand that your health is our priority and your health should be your number one priority. Number one, number one priority in the world should be your health. And you're like, well, um, you know, I think something else might be. Well, I asked a group in Nashville a month ago when we were in Nashville, uh, a group of of the public, a lot of, again, entrepreneurs and that, and some athletes. And I asked them what their number one priority in life was. And I heard family, I heard God, I heard their job, I heard all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, look, those are all good priorities. But if health's not your number one priority, you're not going to be there for them. How many of you seen people that have given their, their life to serve others and then their health went away and they couldn't serve anymore? Right. But if health was the number one priority, they'd be able to serve longer, they'd be able to serve more efficiently, they'd be more present. So if your number one priority is your spouse, your family, your religion, whatever it might be, think about making health your number one priority so you can truly focus on those better and have the energy um, to be able to perform better, to work and to enjoy. So health should be your number one priority. That's why we're talking about this subject. And that's your medicine cabinet and whether it's helping you or it's hurting you. And that's a question you need to ask while you're like this lady's doing, looking to see, okay, is that medicine or that thing in my medicine cabinet truly helping me or is it hurting me? Okay. So the main purpose of having a medicine cabinet at home is one, to be able to get us out of pain, right? We're in pain. We go to our medicine cabinet. It's a sore throat. It's a, it's an ache. It's a pain. It's a bruise. It's a cut. It's whatever it is, a stomach ache. We go to our medicine cabinet. And the second thing is to stop additional pain from happening. Maybe it is like a cut or a bruise and we don't want it to, to get infected or to cause additional pain moving forward. We don't want things to get worse. And so that's the main reasons that we go to our medicine cabinet, right? And so what do we do about that? We want to look at it and say, okay, are these things good for us or not? And the problem is, is with normal medicine cabinets, so, so normal, typical American medicine cabinet is not only the side effects we're going to get into specifically for each drug that's in there, over-the-counter drug or prescription. And so when I say OTC in this webinar, OTC means over-the-counter. That means you go like by the title and all over-the-counter, right? OTC drugs or prescription, which is from your doctor. But we're going to talk about those specific side effects coming up. But I want you to understand that besides the specific side effects of taking NSAIDs and antibiotics and all that that we'll talk about, there's some overriding side effects of any prescription you take or any over-the-counter drug you can take. Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA, they reported that there is a that depression is a side effect of over 200 commonly prescribed medications, just, just basic medications that depression, anxiety are all the side effects um, from these drugs on top of the normal side effects. So what's happening is we're creating a depressed, anxiety-filled nation um, because you're taking these prescriptions or over-the-counter drugs from your medicine cabinet sooner than you're supposed to. And that's really, really important to understand, sooner than you're supposed to. And uh, there might be a need some time for them, but that's the problem is most people jump to them way, way too soon. Okay. All right. So 69% of the drugs have between 10 and hundred different side effects. So in other words, um, almost seven out of 10 drugs have a minimum of 10 side effects up to hundred side effects. 22%. So almost a fourth of all drugs have more than hundred side effects. When you're like, well, I don't feel 100 side effects or 10 side effects when I take these things. Some of them you feel, some of them that comes out in rashes, some of them you get nausea, some of them it just numbs you to get used to the numbness. And I don't mean numbing the pain, I mean numbing life. And others, it's causing side effects internally that they've measured and tested and proven, but it might not affect you in the moment. They're causing liver damage, causing kidney damage, causing heart damage, causing blood vessel damage. And so it's critical to know that it's not just about the, the medications and the initial side effect you feel can be the medications also that are happening internally. And so 
Um, if someone answered, asked you a question, you know, what about marijuana and things? Is that a natural drug? It is a drug. And I know there's people who do medicinal where marijuana um, actually, because there are side effects from that, we don't promote that. Uh, but for some people, it has been a lifesaver. But because the new research that just came out in the last six months shows extreme cognitive uh, decline, the longer you're on that, we're not necessarily the biggest fans of that. But is it a better choice? Probably so. But let's talk about some of the things that are very good choices compared to what's out there uh, right now. Ones that actually improve your health. So we recently did a episode on our podcast. Me and my wife, Hillary, do a podcast called Fit Fam. Um, recommend you can watch us, listen to it on Spotify and all those, but recommend you go to YouTube. I think we have a slide on it coming up uh, with the QR code, but we just talked about it. And I'd recommend you watching on YouTube that podcast, the Fit Fam podcast. I think it's number three and um, it's on prescriptions. And I go through some statistics on there that'll blow your mind, even more and different than what I'm going to go talk to you about right now. And that is that one in three people are on multiple prescriptions daily, multiple prescriptions daily, and many are on six or more prescriptions. We're talking majority of the population are on a prescription and a high amount of them are on a minimum of six prescriptions a day that they take. It blows my mind. Like I can't even conceive it. I don't know anybody personally that does that in my life. Um, if they did, we've worked them off of them. And uh, that's a crazy number that the majority of the population are on. And 97% of the population takes over-the-counter drugs. In other words, your Tylenols, your antacids, your ibuprofens, and those types of things. So almost everybody takes some type of over-the-counter medication, and the majority take actual prescription medications. And why is it a prescription? Because it has such huge side effects it just has to be prescribed and you're not supposed to take it all the time, okay? So are you drug deficient? When you take the antacids, are you an acid deficient? No. Um, when you take the antibiotic, are you antibiotic deficient? No. Are they needed at times to save life and to help in a very specific situation and serious? Absolutely. But you're not deficient. It's not the core root of the problem that you're going after when you take an over-the-counter drug or a prescription drug. And the research shows, as the CDC has said, so not just my opinion, the majority of all disease and pain can be fixed by lifestyle and therapeutic nutrients. So we know that that's the answer. Usually, everyone knows innately the answer is more lifestyle and different nutrients, but we're this society that we want to be out of pain immediately, like we're in the next few minutes. And so we jump to these drugs and I got it at times it is needed. Okay. Or it's justified. Let's put it that way. But the majority of the time it is not. And we just get used to, to going there. So let's start off right off the bat and jump into your medicine cabinet. Okay. So picture your medicine cabinet and the, one of the main things that people go to the medicine cabinet for is for things for a pain and inflammation. Four out of five people when asked suffer from some form of pain or inflammation every single week. And the most common treatment are NSAIDs. That stands for non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. So they're like, well, I don't take NSAIDs. You take ibuprofen, you take NSAIDs. It's an anti-inflammatory drug, right? Whether it's over the counter or it's prescription. Tylenol, an NSAID, right? Aspirin, an NSAID. Naperson and NSAID, right? And so those are things that are really important to understand. These are NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. But the problem is they're highly recommended, right? That they're the most um, prescribed group of pharmaceutical compounds uh, in the world is these compounds for pain and inflammation. But there's a safer approach and it's called the natural NSAID pack. And we're gonna get into that, but let's look at the research first. And that shows that pain sufferers account for more of the problems uh, than any other diseases combined, meaning pain we know is an issue. Inflammation is an issue. And the pharmaceutical companies know it. The pharmaceutical companies know that this is a billion dollar business. And so they love to be able to make it so that they benefit from that tremendously, that they benefit from it tremendously. And so we want to be able to um, help you understand that there's a better way. Okay. There's a better way. And so most used, most use NSAIDs, like I mentioned, Bayer, Bufferin, Ecotrin, St. Joseph's, Advil, Motrin, um, Aleve, Naperson, Celebrex, Tylenol. Those are the NSAIDs that we're talking about. Okay. 
the true effects of NSAIDs. Now, this comes from the FDA. The FDA updated its warnings and showed that over-the-counter NSAIDs and prescription NSAIDs actually increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. They don't lower your risk. They increase the risk of heart failure, okay? They can increase AFAB, right? Or AFib, sorry, AFAB. Um, and basically, arterial fibrillation. We, we have these uh, heart attacks or mini heart attacks, ones that take you down and maybe don't kill you, but you're, you're tired for weeks at a time. You actually, many people suffer from these little AFibs um, and don't realize it was a heart attack. Well, it increases your risk of them 84%. So if you're on an anti-inflammatory drug, your ibuprofens, your Tylenols, right? Your aspirins, you're increasing your risk um, over 80% of dying and at least really affecting your health. And NSAIDs, um, they affect you immediately. And the FDA has come out and said that even occasional users are at risk. Basically, if you take them at all, you're increasing your risk. And what's interesting is these drugs um, have it on their label. It shows on their label that um, they have a heart attack and stroke warning, right? Increase the risk of heart. NSAIDs increase the risk of heart attack, heart failure, and stroke. And they can be fatal by taking their product, okay? So what's another thing that they do? They increase, um, if it's an NSAID like ibuprofen and that they increase the bleeding in the stomach. They actually make your stomach bleed. And we know that ibuprofen can actually cause ulcers in the body and uh, bleeding ulcers. And there's a lot of people that died from bleeding ulcers caused by NSAID. That happens every single year. You can look up the research on that. I think I mentioned it in the podcast. And the other problem is it's a cumulative effect. So you're like, well, 3,000 aspirin can destroy your kidney. Well, I'm not going to take 3,000 aspirin, but it's a cumulative. Three aspirin a day for three years. I know a lot of people that do that. Or it's one aspirin a day. It takes six or nine years. A cumulative effect on the body. And so we've got to understand that we need to not take them um, as much as possible. We need to stay away from them. And that the increase of pancreatic cancer um, is extremely um, accelerated when we are taking NSAIDs. So the FDA has concluded that the data does not support the use of aspirin as preventive medicine or cardiovascular medication. So what is that saying? Is the research shows that you shouldn't be taking aspirin a day for your heart health, but yet doctors are still recommending it, but yet their own association has said, hey, no, the research doesn't back that up. We were wrong. So you shouldn't be taking that. You should be taking something else like an enzyme that helps keep the blood thinner and healthier, but without the side effects of like the ibuprofen, okay? So what about Tylenol? We're like, well, Tylenol is not ibuprofen. It's a different form of an NSAID. Well, it actually is much worse. It affects the liver. So here's a key distinction. Ibuprofen affects the stomach, causes stomach bleeding. Um, acetaminophen, acetaminophen, right? Tylenol affects the liver. So much so, it's the most common cause of intentional and unintentional poisoning. It's uh, the major cause of uh, babies' risks from neurological diseases, ADHD, autism, reproductive disorders. Um, it is absolutely one of the major factors of pulling healthy nutrients from the body. It depletes the body's antioxidant called glutathione um, in the body that's there to help prevent uh, any type of issues like it boosts your immune system. Um, it helps the tissue repair glutathione and it lowers these dramatically. So it's really, really important to understand that Tylenol affects the liver, um, ibuprofen affects the stomach. They're extremely, extremely bad for you. And the government's came out and limited the dosages of, the, of Tylenol because of the severe liver failure, people dying from taking Tylenol but they said you shouldn't take more than 325, but guess what? That's what one tablet is. And how many people take two, three, four of those? And so you're actually already doing what the government says could cause severe liver failure, but people aren't taught about it. Read the label. You're like, well, Doug, where are you getting this information from? And you know, like we have to go pull these studies to show um, our loved ones and our family, no. Go grab a bottle of Tylenol. The only thing that good uh, bottle of Tylenol and ibuprofen is good for is the label. Is read the label, look at it, and see what it says, and it'll show you. It'll, they have black box warnings on Tylenol, meaning it's the most lethal warning possible um, of the damage that it causes. 
uh, by taking it. So is there a time and a place? Maybe so. It's going to take a lot for me to take one because I read the label, I read the research. You want to get to that same point and know your limit. Hopefully after today, it's a lot less often that you take an NSAID. And so NSAIDs, what's cool is there's research out to show that you there's natural approaches that lower inflammation faster and help the body heal much faster than, than NSAIDs. It's called the natural NSAID pack, the natural non-steroid anti-inflammatory, not drug, right? <laughs> natural um, way to help the body into delivering nutrients to reduce inflammation. And this has been proven through studies, University of Toronto double-blind study with Tret Hart and Fisher and others to reduce inflammation, to help the body um, rebuild tissue, helps people with pain immediately. Um, this is definitely the first place to go. And it's a balanced pack that has all of the nutrients in it, mainly enzymes to be able to help with it, to be able to help reduce inflammation. So Big Pharma has been exposed with the research and the FDA is actually coming out and saying it because they know that most people don't even listen, but the NSAIDs cause heart disease that causes stomach uh, damage and bleeding causes liver damage. And most people often take something for pain and inflammation, but they're taking the wrong thing that you need to look to the alternative, like the natural NSAID pack, uh, do it first. And for most of the time, for most people, that's all you need. But then if it's so bad and it's something that you're, quality of life is so low because it may be taking a little something. You take a lot less. And that's really the key because it's a long-term damage and the natural NSAID pack is a great safe alternative. So what do you do? You go pull a Tylenol ibuprofen out, maybe stick it in a drawer if you want to have it for an emergency and put your natural NSAID back in place in your medicine cabinet. Okay. What you do is you just take one for inflammation. You can take it every three hours if you have, just like you used to take in the Tylenols and the ibuprofen. You basically treat it the same way. Okay, so put it in your medicine cabinet. Can't emphasize enough. It's in my medicine cabinet. Um, I take it with me everywhere. I had it in Virginia this uh, yesterday. I had it in Indiana the week before that. I had it in Nashville the week before that. So um, I'm taking it with me tomorrow. We're heading back again, back to the East. So absolutely critical that you take something and have it handy for inflammation and pain. Because usually um, something happens you know, at home a lot, but it really happens on the road and just inflammation, just from traveling. And so you really wanna be able to take that. So now let's switch to the next thing. And that has to do, um, thanks uh, Dr. Ruth saying you've used that. It's been working great, thank you. Um, it's a great formula. Doctors all over um, the world, especially the nation, are switching patients off of ibuprofen and those things to the natural NSAID pack. So if your doctor or health professional recommended you to this webinar or sent you the link and you're watching it now, just know that they care about you deeply. You're in good hands. Stick with that health professional because they're holistic. So the next thing you want to clean out of your medicine cabinet um, are the sleep medica medications. So we're talking everything from the NyQuil's on up to the heavy duty prescription type stuff. And we know that um, we need to sleep. We know the need of it. It's critical that we get into good REM sleep and that our bodies are able to heal. And research has found though, that older people taking sleep drugs have a five times higher, it's 500% higher chance of memory and concentration issues and a four times higher risk of daytime fatigue and sleepiness which can lead to performance, higher risk of car accidents, accidents, just walking, especially as they're older. So anyone over 40, sleep drugs are gonna make it so you're more drowsy the next day. Isn't that the main thing we're wanting is so that we can wake up invigorated and excited. They cause issues with the brain with focus and actually help to destroy our cognitive function. All these things that we want a good night's sleep for, you're taking a sleep medication to be able to you know, help with it. And it's causing the side effects are actually causing the sleepiness and drowsiness and all those issues. And you think, oh, I'm just still sleepy. You know, no, the drugs are causing it. So you want to help to get to sleep. And one thing you want to do is your body will naturally make melatonin and it'll go in and there's receptors in the brain and it'll fill those receptors in when the sun goes down to start calming you down and going to sleep. Those receptors are filled with a chemical called adenosine. And adenosine is created by the body through the melatonin pathway. So melatonin is critical to help your body make the chemicals so that at the end of the day, it could flood the brain receptors with 
melatonin and adenosine and calm the body down so you can get to sleep. So melatonin is the answer, but you want to, in the case of sleeping, use a low dose and also use a very special um, flower herb that uh, can help the body use that melatonin even more naturally, okay? And so it's phenomenal. Sleep is the key and sleep disorders are a real deal. Um, 70 million people in the U.S. have sleep disorders and we have, what, what 300 million people in the U.S.? And that's just people that admit to it. Um, some people think they're fine when they're not. So 70 million people, but addiction, brain decline, drowsiness in the morning, anxiety are all side effects from over-the-counter sleep medicines and prescriptions. Again, your NyQuil's, um, your z all of these products, and you don't need them. You really don't. Um, very few people do. And you know what they do? Let me, let me veer off course for a quick second. One thing that these drugs do too is they make it worse and worse and worse over time, your sleep patterns to now what you you heard of maybe one out of 100,000 people or even a million people would have the machine, sleep apnea machine at night. Now um, you're getting to where they're all over the place. They're being sold by everyone. Almost like that's what you should do at night. It's where this crazy machine to be able to get good sleep and good oxygen, you know, get your body breathing properly, um, start exercising, start taking things like low dose melatonin to help you get to sleep. So you're not numbing your body so that your breathing is impaired, that you're able to breathe and get better oxygen. You don't have those machines. We're just going down this pathway to feed the pharmaceutical companies, to feed these processed food companies, um, to play their game. Quit it. This should be in your medicine cabinet in place of these drugs. And melatonin will help you get to sleep. This is a product I take almost every night. Because I'm on the road a lot, I have a hard time turning off my brain. Um, if you ask my family or the staff, I'm like thinking all the time. And so I'll take just a half a gummy. My wife takes a gummy and a half. So we do two a day. Um, but I take half a gummy. That's all I need. Uh, I don't take more than that. And I take it and guarantee 15, 20 minutes. If I lay down, I do my little meditation, I can get out. If I don't, it's tougher for me. So it's really phenomenal. They help people with questions in here with sleep apnea. Absolutely help people sleep apnea. If you talk to your doctor, uh, your sleep apnea doctor, they're going to be all for you trying it because the research is overwhelming. There's over 100,000 studies on low dose melatonin helping people sleep. So it should be the place you go through first, okay? And it's super, super, friend, uh, super important to be able to uh, understand the power of this. And someone just mentioned that they had a person get off of sugar and it helped get off the CPAP, the machine. And absolutely, sugar is one of the detrimental um, problems today of sleep patterns because of insulin sensitivity. So cleaning up your diet is important. One of the things um, is to understand that the research is there. And I'll come back to that, by the way. Thanks, Laura Lee. Um, and what the research is there to show the power of melatonin. And again, hundreds of thousands of studies on this subject. And so it's really important is that you want to take though melatonin in low doses. Mel melatonin in large doses is phenomenally therapeutic. People take it for cancer, take it for all kinds of stuff, but for getting just to sleep, you want a low dose melatonin, okay? And so the awesome thing about it is that um, melatonin is this dual product. We do have a high dose melatonin for therapeutic purposes, but the gummies are for low dose, help you get to sleep and it helps with antioxidant levels in the body. Melatonin is an antioxidant. It has so many great benefits. Um, there's no side effects because it's used as antioxidant if your body doesn't need um, any more help to create the melatonin, the adenosine to get into the receptors to help calm the body down. But there's some other tips you need. And one is good nutrition and exercise. And the good nutrition, um, Laura Lee hit it on the head, is lower your sugar. So we have a thing called the 21 day challenge. Um, or there's an app you can download. It's called 63 for me, the number 63 for me. Um, it's an app you can download. You can do the free version of it and just follow through. And one of the things you do each day is you actually um, go through and you count your grams of sugar and you keep yeah. it over 50. And just doing that has just changed, changed the life of many people. So you need a proper environment. Super important to make sure it's dark in your room. Put tape over the blue and the green lights, whatever they may be. It's a game changer if you can't do that. Wear the mask. Um, consistent wake up time should have that time. How do you know if you have a consistent wake up time? If you wake up a minute or two before the alarm clock, 
If you wake up a minute or two for alarm clock, then you're setting your circadian cycles. And that's what you want to have is that consistent wake up time. It's funny because I travel so much. As I mentioned, there's a three hour time difference between us and the East Coast right now. And um, I wake up at the same time. And I'm like, what am I doing waking up at this time? You know, three o'clock here, four o'clock here. But if I think about the time difference, it's the same time I normally wake up. And it's that consistent wake up time. Sunlight in the morning, the second you wake up, open the shades, walk outside if you can. It'll help you get that vibrant real quick switch over from the adenosine melatonin in the receptors in the brain over to allowing the natural caffeine into the brain, the natural adrenaline, endorphin, serotonin into the brain to give you that energy for the day. Sunlight immediately is critical, okay? And then make sure you get rid of the light in the evenings. And that's why screens and those things are bad. Use blue uh, glasses, things like that, if you have to do that. And meditation and breathing. Deep breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Once you breathe all the way out, breathe out more. Just do that simply. Six seconds in, six, six seconds out for six repetitions and um, or nine repetitions, and it'll really do your body good, okay? Um, no synthetic caffeine after 2 p.m., no synthetic caffeine at all would be great, but at least after 2 p.m. And definitely no alcohol within three hours of bedtime. It really messes your circadian cycles up. Sorry, drinkers. If you're going to drink, do it earlier. Don't do it at all. Be better off. Okay, so low-dose melatonin, uh, the Passiflora, uh, Incarnata, which is a very specific flower, very specific grown one, and uh, it helps with the melatonin. That's why this product works so much better than any others on the market. This is the research on the Passiflora mixed with melatonin and why it helps you get to sleep immediately versus straight melatonin and why those herbs are critical for the body. So it's not just about going and buying a product that has um, melatonin in it. It's about an organic whole food one based on also the things that will synergistically help the body get to sleep. Okay. So Hi, everyone. what we want to do now is really be able to focus in um, on the ability for you to replace the medicine cabinets, z -Quil, night quills, prescription drugs with the sleep gummies, okay? All right, last, this is our last one. I think it's this, second last, synthetic vitamins. And you might think vitamins, medicine cabinet, most people have like their vitamins in the medicine cabinet. It's crazy. Should be out on your main counter, taking them every day, multiple times a day, but um, the ones that are found in medicine cabinets around the nation, it's funny, they're old and they're synthetic. And the popular view now is that all vitamins are good um, if you take them and you can take any vitamin. Well, that is being taught to you by the pharmaceutical companies because they want you to have synthetic drugs that they can, for the healthy people that don't take as many prescriptions, um, that they can own that market also. And it's a market that does create um, the cells with a lining of basically a fog and it's not giving you the right nutrients. Your body still craves the bad foods and those types of things because the vitamins are synthetic. Synthetic vitamins are extremely bad for you. Number one sold vitamin today is Centrum. Guys, you know who owns Centrum? Pfizer. You know Pfizer is? One of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world that cares less about your health they care about money and they care about keeping you addicted to their products, right? Their drugs. And so they come into our market now and bought up most of the companies. There's very few of us left of their family owned and not owned or have some stake money invested into them from the pharmaceutical companies. We have zero. We have zero investors. We have zero other owners besides family, our family. And so um, you can be assured of that because we're going to hold true to the whole food mission. So the lightning gummies or our whole food vitamin mineral capsules are made from whole foods. The vitamins come from foods, okay? And that's critical versus the vitamins coming from synthetically made chemicals. If you use synthetic vitamins, the research shows that they're extremely detrimental. You have a higher risk of cancers, heart attacks, overall disease, um, birth defects, um, arteriosclerosis, all of these things are increased risk by taking synthetic vitamins. You need to make sure they're in their natural form. Same thing as minerals. They need to be organic minerals. They need to say glycinate for the most part on them, like magnesium glycinate or calcium glycinate. So you absolutely need whole food vitamins, not synthetic. And I'd highly recommend 
if you don't get them from optimal health systems, you work with a company that one, you know, the formulator is two, they're family owned three, they're, they guarantee whole food. And you need to have those things in place because basically you're betting your life on it. Why do you take vitamins? You're, you're, you're wanting to improve your life, to have a higher quality of life, to live a longer life, to be able to reduce your risk of disease. You're betting your life on it. You should look to obey the laws of nature and make sure it's whole food based. So we have the capsules and then we have the gummies that are whole food, vitamin based to get you 100% of your daily needs. Now, again, it's impossible to get 100% of the recommended daily allowance in our diet today. It's been proven. The research studies are there. Some of you have seen my seminars and webinars on them. Um, that me and Hillary are going to do a podcast on that subject again soon. If you missed it in the past, I'm going to go through specific studies for you, showing you you would be gaining a seven pounds of fat a day if you ate the amount of calories the government shows you you need to get 100% of the RDA without taking a vitamin. Just take a good multivitamin, right? And we made the lightning gummies for that purpose. The lightning gummies have been in the works for years. We couldn't make them because um, gummies could be made whole food and they're full of junk. And once we had the technology to do that, we were going to launch it, but they, um, no one had the right thing to be able to make lightning bolts out of gummies. So we had to go make that from scratch. And um, uh, it's to be perfect. We want it to be shaped like something that we liked energy, lightning. It has a deep meaning for me and our company, but also I think kids enjoy that also. So that's what it is. Whole food based, everything organic, phenomenal whole food product. Throw out the synthetic vitamins. And the dosing for it is the same as our capsule product, three a day for, for kids younger than that, just a few, one to two a day is perfect. The problem you're going to have is that they want more and more and more. I have my two-year-old grandson. The key is I'm just like, he wants to eat them all the time. <laughs> and so um, uh, Dr. Owens, thank you so much. I uh, say so you promoted OHS during the FDA long COVID <laughs> public hearing earlier this week. Um, you know, the it's absolutely... Um, why we need to understand that this is a battle. And it used to be that the battle wasn't as big, meaning you had so many people on our side teaching whole food, eat whole foods, don't eat processed foods, take whole food vitamins, stay holistic. Don't go to drugs unless it's absolutely necessary and then do it for a short time, right? Just do it like it's supposed to. And um, now it's just becoming the media's way to say, this is the way you live right? You take those prescriptions, you take over-the-counter drugs, you feel a little something, you take this drug. You're not deficient in the drugs. They're there to save your life, okay? And they can do that at times, but we got to quit it and we got to educate properly on this, all right? Every person does need a multivitamin. Oh, and, that, and I forgot about the other huge thing. Go to your medicine cabinet, get rid of antibiotics. Look, if they're old, you shouldn't have them anyways, okay? If you do take an antibiotic, you should have finished the thing or else you probably created super germs in other words, you killed off the weak bacteria, but now the strong one survived and now they're resistant. So you shouldn't have them, although most people have antibiotics in their medicine cabinet. Antibiotic means against life. Anti is against, biotic is life. So antibiotic against life. Their job is to kill life. And they do. They kill everything that's alive. You're supposed to have um, hundreds of billions, trillions actually, of friendly live bacteria in your gut that boosts your immune system, that makes enzymes, that digests lactose, that makes serotonin. 90% of the serotonin, the happy chemical is made from your gut. If your probiotics aren't there um, and they're not present and they're doing, not doing their job, you don't, you're not happy. You don't get serotonin, 90%. Antibiotics destroy, hopefully the bad bacteria, but they destroy the good also. So we want to understand that antibiotics should not be a first step. It should be a last step. Probiotics. Pro four, biotic life, right? Four life is what we need. If our probiotic levels are up, most of the time we don't need an antibiotic. And if you do need it, if you do have a bad bacteria in the body, taking probiotics first many times fixes the problem. But the thing is, is they need to be stabilized. They need to be able to get through the city of the gut. They need to be able to fight. And that's where the patents come in. Not just any junk probiotic. You need a stabilized probiotic, Okay. So antibiotics are the leading cause of yeast infections and they create superbugs because they usually only kill off the bad, uh, the young, um, weak bacteria because when people feel better, they quit taking them. If anyone in my life takes an antibiotic, they finish it, okay? And that isn't very often they take one, but if they do, they finish it. 
because you want to destroy all of the bad guys as much as possible and then keep the flora coming during it. And this is something that I think it was a myth in the past. People, well, I don't want to take probiotics while I'm on an antibiotic because um, they'll just die. The, the antibiotic destroys them. Not these probiotics. The research shows that our DDS1, Acidophilus, Abifidus, Armophilus actually is not destroyed by the antibiotic. They'll actually help and help destroy the um, bad guys. Now, the probiotics that are in your gut in the moment the good guys, they usually get destroyed, but we can send these guys in at the same time as the antibiotic can help. So take it with it and definitely take it after, okay? So again, we're over half, we're over half bacteria. And I wanted to give um, this uh, research citation because a lot of people don't understand when I say we're over half bacteria. We really are, but we want it to be good bacteria. We want to be able to have a symbiotic relationship with our good bacteria. Our good bacteria need to be healthy. That's what causes our cravings in the body. We want to crave healthy foods. We want to have energy. Um, we want to be able to have a proper mindset. The chemicals in the brain, most are created from the gut. So we want to be able to keep that friendly bacteria there. So when you take have gut problems, you want to be able to fix it quick. And so I got it. People will jump to antibiotic. Don't do that first. Jump to a probiotic. And if that doesn't fix it, and you maybe need the antibiotic every once in a while, then you take it and you finish it, but then get back on that probiotic while you're on the antibiotic and heavily afterwards. I'd go through a bottle of um, probiotic or what we call the flora blitz if you've been on antibiotics. So you have these nerves that go from the gut to the brain. It's called the gut-brain axis. And um, it's a specific nerve called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve goes from the gut to the brain. It's a straight shot. There's nothing in, in, uh, interfering. And it's that gut, the healthy gut says, hey, we need more serotonin to be happy. And it makes it, the gut says, hey, we, we crave these foods, the healthier foods. And it does it. You need the gut to be happy and to send the right signals to the brain. And a lot of people don't realize that's where it's at. And one of my best friends, uh, one of my mentors shown that antibiotics, I'm sorry, probiotics have been shown to, uh, to get rid of depression and anxiety. The things that these antibiotics cause. So we want to have the probiotics in there because it actually can get rid of the problems of, you know, depression, anxiety, and all those things that people have many times because of the antibiotics. Okay. So we want to make sure that the body is craving the right foods. 90% of serotonin is made in the gut. We understand the critical nature here. I want to give you the research citing. So you're not like Doug just said this, now, the research shows that I'm just reporting the research to you. And that way, you'll know, you don't have to believe me uh, when I say it. I'll tell you if it's my opinion, but most time I'll try not to give you my opinion too much. It's based on the research and what the research shows. The friendly bacteria are craving what they were raised on, what they like, and that will help you to understand that if you replace the bacteria, even the good ones that are in there with new ones and eat healthier, your body will start craving just healthier foods. And it not only helps with the, the craving, but the less sugar you have, um, then the less bad bacteria. Bad bacteria only eat one thing. They eat sugar. So lower your sugar intake. As um, a great doctor mentioned here in the message is lower your sugar intake, and it helps tremendously with your friendly bacteria levels in your body. Okay. So um, the chemicals like serotonin, um, the help with mood, cognitive factors, stress, appetite are all based on the probiotics. Okay. So we know what they do. We need to make sure that we have that healthy foods in the gut, the happiness in the gut. And uh, we know which ones do that. There's friendly bacteria. There's different families, different species. So Acidophilus family, Bulgaricus family, Plantarum family, okay, Salivaris family. They're all different families. And we want to make sure that they're all in the gut. And our formula called um, Flora Plus has the different bacteria for the different places in the gut, thanks to Dr. Shahani who brought us that research and helped with this formulation. Um, we worked on this formulation for three years together, way back in the 90s. And it's just a phenomenal because it's based on the needs of the bacteria in the gut. So you, you put the, reg, the bacteria that's needed in different areas back. Why is that important? Each bacteria does a different function. One makes lactase to help with lactose tolerance. One's your immune system to boost your immune system. One is to uh, help you deliver nutrients into the blood stream, right? One helps with brain function and with cognitive function, the creation of serotonin that we talked about. But the probiotic, this is a study showing our probiotic can handle the heat um, of you know normal life where most probiotics are destroyed. So you can take it, they stay alive, they're live bacteria, they get into your gut and they colonize. And that's what those research studies show. So go to your medicine cabinet, take out antibiotics, shouldn't be in there anyways. 
um, and replace it with the Flora Plus. There's also a product called Flora Blitz, which is a packet of probiotics that you can take that for a super, super high dose. Um, but this is the main one we're focusing on this month is a Flora Plus product, okay? Take one to three capsules per day. You can take it more often. If you have a serious situation going on, it's like three, three times a day. And just like you're taking the antibiotics you normally take, you want to take the flora in its place, okay? So we at Optimal Health Systems, our tagline is where health comes naturally, where health comes naturally. And we say that because it's important to understand that you can do things and obey the laws of nature and you can clean out your medicine cabinet. And the high majority of the time, you don't, you don't have to go to those drugs and those prescriptions and those over the counter. It just becomes habit. And your cells can't vibrate at the highest level. In other words, at the highest level of, of cognition, of being present, of happiness, of joy, you can't vibrate at that frequency if you're on a prescription or over-the-counter drug. It's impossible because part of the drug's job is to actually cloud the cell. So you can't get good um, electrical current. You can't get good uh, your electrolyte minerals, getting nutrients in and toxins out of the cell. That doesn't happen properly, and it clouds your thinking. It clouds your way of being. It clouds daily life. You're not present as much. Once you start eating healthier, whole foods, you start getting rid of the drugs in your life, and you start just relying on good, healthy lifestyles. And when you need to, the nutrition, the supplements for that, you always need nutrition, but the supplements for that, um, then things clear up, and it's a whole new world. And it just opens up so many doors to be um, more present with your spouse, with your kids, with your hobbies, with your work. And it's the right way to live. The other way is you're being controlled. You're being controlled to eat the foods that they're recommending to you that are junk, that cause you to crave more. You're being controlled to take the drugs that make you dependent on them, that keep your mind foggy and you don't, clear think, you don't think clearly. And all of a sudden they say, well, just do this and just take this and you keep taking it. Guys, it's a great business model. What's going on with the pharmaceutical companies and um, the big food companies, but it's a terrible moral model, terrible. And it's just trying to control you. Break free of that, open your eyes to this, clean the medicine cabinet out today. Make that commitment. Um, I think we have a special on those products. It's, oh, yep, for you if you want, 15% off um, until um, just for this month. So a few more days on that. And if you order online, just make sure you put the code CLEAN in there. And the, op, the reps, bless their heart, uh, it's a 520 here in Arizona. They stayed. So if you want to call right now, 1-800-890-4547. Um, they're here to take your order, to help you with it, answer your questions. Uh, we love them. If you just want to go online, you can do that also and order it. We give you specials to thank you. You don't have to buy our products, clean your medicine cabinet out, put healthier nutrition in there, but we'd love for you to take advantage of what we have because we feel we, we're the best in the world at what we do. Um, bottom line is the healthier your presence, the more you can be present. And we just want your presence to be healthier. We want you to work on your body fat, we want you to work on your energy, we want you to work on your strength, we want you to work on the cleanness of the cells or the nutrient levels in the blood. We want you to work on these things because it'll help you be more present and enjoy life at a much higher level healthier that presence, the more you can be present. We love you guys. If you have any questions, I have just a few minutes left. Um, mention it in the chat, if you would. If you'd go into the chat, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to um, answer them. Uh, Becky, were there any I didn't answer along the way that you might have seen? So the sleep gummies, do they help with people who have sleep apnea? Okay, so the question is, um, thanks, Ruth. Um, the sleep gummies help with sleep apnea. Absolutely help with sleep apnea because, again, sleep apnea, many times people think, well, this is a breathing issue. And so how can sleep gummies help? Well, as I mentioned, I maybe didn't mention it strong enough, so let me try again, is many times the breathing issues are coming because of the drugs because a lot of the drugs slow everything down and make it, makes it tougher to breathe. And once you free that up and you're not on drugs anymore, over-the-counter drugs, prescription drugs, sleep medications, all those things, even from the NyQuil's and that, and you're taking something natural like the melatonin and the Passiflora um, Carnata to be able to help get you to sleep, then all of a sudden your, your muscles are still strong and they're not drugged and you breathe better. And so it helps the sleep apnea. It helps with those things. Uh, many people, gosh, yesterday... <laughs> In Virginia Beach, a lady came up and said, hey, 
um, I use the sleep gummies and I got to tell you, saved our marriage. My, my spouse used to snore real bad and doesn't snore anymore. I'm like, Oh, I got it. I, that makes sense based on what we just said. Right. But it's not really promoted as that. And it doesn't necessarily have to every time help every time because there might be an issue of the way they're sleeping and the angle and stuff, but it was really cool to hear that. So yes, it will. So thank you uh, for that very much. Any other questions? Um, I either bored you all or answered them all. Cool. I'll say I answered them. So um, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, again, please subscribe to Fit Fam podcast. Listen to the latest one last week. It's on there. New one comes out tomorrow. Um, we're going to come in late tonight before we fly out tomorrow and shoot another one um, for next week. There it is. You can click on that. Take your phone, that QR code. It'll take you. Uh, does that take you to the YouTube one? Takes you to YouTube. Push up subscribe button. Got to hit the subscribe button. And I get a little email. So thank you for that. We just started this. We want to start it organically. Um, we didn't want to have a whole bunch of followers in there that weren't really committed and so we started at one follower and we're just working our way up. Um, we want to have hundreds of thousands eventually, but ones that truly care about natural health and they're doing everything uh, to be able to promote and to follow the things that are needed to be able to um, have optimal health come naturally. That's basically it. So thanks again. Um, please join us on FitFam. Let us know the things that you like. Follow us on social media. Um, I'm a big fan of social media. It's like I say about cars, you can use a car to go to the bank to rob it or you can take it to church. Um, you should only follow people that are on social media that are happy and healthy and promote such things. Get rid of everyone else. And we try to do that for you. Follow us on Instagram at OHS, the number four life on Facebook. And you're more than welcome to follow me and um, Hillary individually too, if you want to be bored with a funny little kid stuff. So love you guys. Thanks again. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. Keep chewing.